It was something like day 322 of the pandemic. I set the mood lighting in my den and prepared to wander into a Zoom cocktail hour, which was being hosted on the opposite coast. These were my friends. But were they? I was asked if I wanted to grant Zoom permission to access my camera. Allow. Faces in Brady Bunch formation stared back at me. I was asked if I wanted to participate using Zoom audio. Fine. I know I was supposed to recognize these people, but something was a little off. My discomfort was palpable. I felt like they could see it on me, just as easily as I could see in their faces that they were all hiding something. Well, some of them were hiding something. The others were just tipsy and looking at the side tab of Amazon gift ideas. But when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And these disconnected university peers all struck me as suspicious, or what the kids would call sus as fuck. I was immediately tempted to pull the old digital Irish goodbye. And that's when you pretend to have connectivity issues and then you drop out of the meeting mid-sentence. But there was no point. I was here for information. If I left without it, the next Delta Feta Kappa cocktail Zoom wouldn't be for another two weeks. And details from the Philadelphia event would be two weeks fuzzier, foggier. Lies would be two weeks more polished. I had to do the one thing that would put everyone's mind at ease. I had to do the one thing that would keep me off their radar. I had to pretend to be absolutely plastered. Hey, you fuckers. What's shaking, bacon? You guys all social distancing and wearing your masks and shit? Jesus, I've had like 11 cocktails. Hey, check it out. Baxter's totally hammered. Let's pay way more attention to him than we would normally. Shit. It was seven seconds in, and I had already screwed the pooch. This is the kind of snooping I would have been much better at 15 years ago, if the technology had actually existed. My instincts were poor. Zoom was still foreign. I'm really only comfortable live in person, out in the meat space. Also, I had gotten soft with domestic life. But now that I'm divorced and helping Susie Lexington figure out why her long-distance girlfriend Sarah had been making shady Venmo transactions with a Philadelphia nonprofit, it was the worst possible time to suck at pretending to be something I'm not. I attempted to redirect. Wow, Jonathan, you're looking pretty goddamn healthy. Have you been sneaking into the fucking health club? The fucking gym? During lockdown? I keep telling him that Planet Fitness... The pivot worked. John Bexon had always been the center of attention. By shifting back towards his social gravity pull, I would be able to observe their conversation like a wallflower. Which, as you know, has its perks. I looked down at the phone and saw a text. Thank you, it said. It was from Susie. Susie's screen was way down at the bottom of the Zoom. The light in her living room was dark. I feel like you could hardly see her. She was doing that thing some people do in a Zoom meeting where they set the computer over on a coffee table and they look off at a television. It's like they're there, but they're not really there. It was exactly what I should be doing. The aforementioned Sarah, who was in an apartment in Austin, was also in a fairly anonymous square down on the 12-screen Zoom call. She was texting someone. It's fascinating how you can pull up one person's screen to be the big screen on your screen. You can stare at them with a sort of intrusive amount of attention, but there's no risk of the kind of eye contact that requires an explanation. Because let's face it, all 12 people are making direct eye contact with each other the entire time. Unless, of course, you're making a point not to. Sarah knew she was on camera, and her significant other, Susie, was in the Zoom meeting live from Jersey. Those texts were either going to her girlfriend where they were important enough that they can't wait. The human animal was not evolved for this meta-social experiment. I was busy soaking in details from Sarah's body language when all of a sudden John's voice invaded. Hey Sarah, who are you busy texting over there? I looked up at John's box. He was wearing a shit-eating grin. 
Was this buffoon actually going to do my investigation for me? This could prove fortuitous. I am um, sorry. Sarah's voice sounded strange. I lost my voice. She said in a strained whisper. I'm mainly just here to see your lovely faces. Did she have laryngitis? Had she not been social distancing? Did she catch the vid? I had met Sarah on several occasions, and while she's not necessarily someone who seemed tremendously trustworthy, she does tend to get flustered easily. Panic can make someone reluctantly honest, despite their worst intentions. My phone lit up. She has a Google Home, the text message read. But it wasn't from Susie. It was from a new number I didn't recognize. What was happening here? I noticed movement from Susie's screen. BRB, gotta go pee, she had typed into the Zoom chat so as not to interrupt John and his wife, who had gone back to talking about Bitcoin. <sighs> Fucking Bitcoin. I digress. I looked back at Sarah's screen. She was looking at me with a weird expression. I mean, I know she was looking at her camera, at everyone, but her expression didn't seem to be participating with the banal and tipsy crypto chatter. Where someone's looking, and what someone is paying attention to, had always been one and the same. Until now. Until 2020. My phone lit up again. It's right there on her end table, next to the couch. The anonymity of the text was slightly chilling. Was I receiving a wrong number text message from someone who was mid-conversation somewhere else on the planet? I looked back at my screen. Sarah's face seemed to be pleading with me. I couldn't quite put my finger on what was happening. Then I looked over at her girlfriend's empty couch in Jersey. Poorly lit, save for the frenetic ambience of television commercials. I narrowed my eyes to the table. I barely made out a tiny cylindrical pod. Were these texts from Sarah? My pulse raced. My face was awash in adrenaline. I don't know why I suddenly felt a new suspicion. Why had Susie been reaching out to me for her snooping needs? She and I go way back, but we had never really kept up a frequent texting relationship, not until this year. I remember feeling curious that she seemed to come to me out of the blue, and all forthcoming and oversharing, and privileging me with unsolicited information about her relationship with Sarah. Was Susie to be trusted? Hey guys, I pseudo-drunkenly slurred. You want to see a funny trick I saw in a viral video about Zoom meetings with some guy and his Alexa device? The conversation halted. Hey Google, I said into my laptop. In Susie's screen, three dots lit up on the shadowy device hiding on her end table. Read Susie Foster's diary. Okay, reading your latest diary entry from December 17th, 2020. A robotic voice announced to the stunned cocktail Zoom. I can't believe I have to do another stupid fucking cocktail Zoom with the losers from college. Jonathan never shuts the fuck up about Bitcoin. Some days I don't know why Heather doesn't finally leave him for Tony. I guess when John got lucky putting 50 bucks down on a stupid blockchain stock in 2015, his wife has to forever pretend she's not fucking the best friend. They never stop texting each other during Zoom calls, and she always laughs at his stupid comments. It's embarrassing. I'm pretty sure I can smell his obnoxious aftershave through the modem in my Chromebook. These people are the worst. Meanwhile, Sarah sincerely still thinks I'm really gay. If her dad doesn't give me that job soon at Jefferson, I don't know how much longer I can keep up this act. She's like a nervous little mouse, thank God for the pandemic and her job in Texas otherwise I would actually have to put my mouth where my money is. At least the Jimmy Baxter plan seems to be working out. Thanks to his not-so-subtle crush on me back during college he's willing to trust me and snoop around for Sarah's passwords. These people suck. Side note, remind me to buy ass cream for the embarrassing rash on my ass. It's starting to form the shape of the state of Nevada. Pretty soon I'll have tiny casinos laundering mafia money for crooked politicians. It won't be the weirdest thing I've had in my ass this year.
Okay that's all, I'm going out now to a crowded party without a mask, fuck the quarantine. I don't mind being a super spreader, it will be just like college again. Thanks Google, and go fuck yourself. The dead silence of the Zoom meeting was interrupted by a toilet flushing. Susie plopped down on the couch, shifting, perhaps uncomfortably. She hadn't seemed to notice that everyone she knew was staring at her, remotely from around the country. But again, on a Zoom call, everyone is looking at you, and no one is looking at you, all the time. Sarah's rectangle disappeared from the Zoom. Tony's rectangle disappeared from the Zoom. Jonathan and Heather got up quickly and left with understandably weird vibes. They seemed to forget their laptop was still streaming. One of the clowns from college cued a funny sound effect from retro AOL of a door slamming shut. A robotic voice spoke up. Shall I continue reading entries from your diary? I think it's time for me to go get a real drink. Goodbye.